The Toyota Land Cruiser has been around for a very, very long time. And in that time period, it has captured the hearts of so many people with its rugged off-road capability, but also great manners on road and bomb-proof reliability. It's an ethos that so many people have bought into, including myself. So on this episode of Eat Sleep Drive, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the brand new 2020 Land Cruiser from the perspective of someone who owns a previous generation Land Cruiser. everyone, my name is Kurt and you're watching Eat Sleep Drive. On this episode of the channel, we're diving into the 2020 Land Cruiser, a vehicle, in my opinion, which needs no introduction. It is incredibly iconic. And as someone who buys into the brand and is a current owner of a 2007 Land Cruiser, I'm very excited to see what this latest one is all about because I've spent a decent amount of time in the Land Cruisers from the 90s, the 80 series, and also the 100 series, the ones from the 2000s. I have yet to be in this latest version and I really wanna see if it lives up to the Land Cruiser brand name. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're first gonna take this thing for a drive, see how it handles and feels on and off-road. I'll give you guys some impressions as well. And then we'll pull over and I'm gonna show you guys some more features that this thing offers because really this is something that has become a whole new thing in the Land Cruiser brand because it is quite, quite premium. Setting off in the 2020 Land Cruiser, what is the first thing that you notice compared to the 100 series? Well, driving it, it's this 5.7 liter engine. That's one liter more than the 4.7 liter in my generation, the 100 series, which is from the 2000s era. And it definitely feels faster. It feels like it has more torque. It feels like it has more horsepower. The car doesn't feel exponentially faster. And despite the fact that it has significantly more horsepower, it's about a hundred more horsepower than the previous generation. But I think that's mostly attributed to the fact that this is about 500 pounds heavier than the previous generation. So it does feel like a step up in the direction of power from the last one, but it's not a huge one. Not as huge as I would say from the 80 series, which is like the 90s nine, 1990s generation Land Cruiser that had the straight six. Going from that to the V8 of the 100 series, that was a night and day difference. This isn't quite to that level, but it is an evolution in that regard. The engine is coupled to an eight speed transmission, which is good because it gets better fuel economy. My Land Cruiser gets about 14 miles to the gallon. And once again, it's a 2007 and that has a five speed. Some of the 100 series had a four speed. This is eight gears, which is just nuts. And I'm getting about 16 miles to the gallon. So it's marginally better. And honestly, in this day and age, it's pretty low in my opinion and could definitely be better. Now, other than the engine and transmission, which are definitely improved to the past generation, what is it like to drive? Well, it does feel slightly bigger and the numbers wouldn't tell you that. It's only about an inch wider, a little over an inch, inch and a quarter, and uh, about two inches longer, give or take. So it is really, not much larger at all but it does feel a little bit bigger and i guess maybe some of that has to do with the heft but it's a much better handling car on the road despite the fact that the steering is completely numb but you know it's not a sports car but as far as when you're transitioning through turns and kind of taking turns at speed you could really thank they implemented this kdss system on this car and that stands for kind excuse me, kinetic dynamic suspension system, a bit of a mouthful to say, but basically what that means is they are using hydraulics to control the anti-roll bars so that on road it stiffens them up because you want stiffer roll bars on the road to keep it feeling a tight handling car basically. And then off road it loosens them up so you can get more articulation. So it's an interesting 
implementation and a really smart thing, I think, in the in Toyota's um, engineering to be able to do that because it aids both on and off-road characteristics, which this is a reoccurring theme with this car. This is not the ultimate off-road vehicle. This is the ultimate on and off-road vehicle. And I think that's an important distinction. So this thing can do everything. And in that way, it does everything better than the 100 series. It's better on the road. And I think outside of being a little bit bigger off-road, it is just as capable at least. Let's talk about some other improvements in this vehicle. And the big one to me is the quality of the ride and the quality of the lack of noise and vibrations in here. It is a very, very quiet and very lovely place to be, even at speed. Very little wind noise, almost no road noise. So it's super comfortable and the ride is really great for a big off-road capable SUV on the road. Uh, it soaks up bumps really well. And I think that, once again, that's one of the things that they've really done well is make this a little more of a luxury vehicle. And that's something that you have to do when you consider the fact that this is now $85,000. The other thing that is very important to me as a Land Cruiser owner is longevity and also sort of build quality and solidity. This feels solid to me. There are no squeaks or rattles. And I've had this, it, it, the car only has 5,000 miles on it, granted, but I've had this on and off road. No squeaks and rattles to speak of. The door closes super tight. You can just tell that this is built to a higher standard than other cars. One other really important thing that I'd like to talk about on the luxury standpoint is what I'm about to demonstrate right here. I just set the radar cruise control and what that does is it paces the car in front of me. So I can set the cruise at whatever speed I want and say I want to go, I'm, maximum I want to go is 65. It will go 65 until there's a car in front of me and then if the car in front of me is going 60, it will pace them at a 60 mile an hour speed and maintain a distance. It is so great for being on long road trips and you don't constantly be have, have to adjust your cruise control. You have three different settings with it. So there's a little button on the steering wheel here. I'm in the closest setting right now, but now I'm just going to the longest setting. So it will increase the distance between the car in front of me and myself. And then I can do, once again, the setting two, which gets a little closer, and then the full-on BMW spec, which is the last setting, which gets you even closer. So really nice feature, and I use it all the time on this car. I would love to have it on my 100 Series Land Cruiser. Let's talk about some of the interior features, because that's really where they've spent a lot of time and effort, making this a little more of a luxury vehicle and really makes it quite, quite comfortable, both on and off-road. First of all, you have these seats, which is a really nice soft leather. I really like the color combination as well with this dark sort of saddle brown. Let's jump inside here. And I want to show you guys kind of the center stack, which is a huge upgrade over my 100 series. And the things that you're really gonna notice here are once again, the niceties. So down here, you have heated and cooled seats. And of course, a heated steering wheel, which is right here cooled seats and my favorite part about these is many cars have cooled seats but not all of them have this automatic function which somehow is monitoring the temperature of the seat and adjusting accordingly um, oftentimes I find with cooled seats there I just put them on full max I feel like I peed my pants and you kind of constantly have to adjust them whereas this one with the auto feature is actually a really really nice addition I had this car in 115 degree heat and the AC worked really, really well. One other thing that I really like that is a really cool addition is this cool box here. There's a little power button that you hit and it uses the AC to cool your drinks and it actually cools them off quite well to pretty much close to refrigerator levels. And that's been a really nice addition, especially for this desert road trip. I'm gonna put the car into gear so I can show you this view button. This is really neat. Hit this button and you have a upper view of the car right here. I've pulled up to this sort of trailer thing to show you guys. 
And you can see how, as I get closer, you can see the cameras and you can see how close it gets, which is a really nice feature, especially over here when you're have, we have such a big vehicle and a long hood, it's sometimes hard to judge distance. So, so that's really, really nice. I really do like the sound system. It's very good quality, but I do find this sort of infotainment system as well as navigation to be quite clunky. It's very slow to respond and very slow to update when you're driving. And in an $85,000 vehicle, it just doesn't seem up to snuff. The resolution definitely looks five to, uh, five to 10 years ago, honestly. And that's just really unacceptable when it comes to paying 85 grand for a car. But it does work well and I haven't had any glitches and the Bluetooth works really well, which is really all I'm really concerned about. Moving on to some of the off-road capabilities, you have your center locking differential right here and then your crawl control over here where you can actually adjust this dial and adjust how fast you crawl. Of course, the Land Cruiser is all-time all-wheel or four-wheel drive, whichever you would like to call it, but you still can go into the for low portion there. This button and feature right here is actually a cool little addition. What this does is you use this if you're trying to do a super tight turn, maybe think off-road, loose surface or something like that. It will actually drag the inner wheel and allow you to do a tighter turn than you otherwise would if you were just turning the wheel normally. I wanted to jump in the back here and show you guys the one option that is offered on the non-heritage edition regular Land Cruiser and that is the rear seat entertainment system with this screen right here on both sides. And of course you have your controls for all your AC and then your HDMI input for watching video back here. Moving to the back, one thing I did find interesting that's different than my 100 series Land Cruiser is these are not easily able to be taken out, these rear third row seats. In my generation 100 series, there's a lever down there and you can kind of just yank these out. The only way you're gonna get these out is with tools. So that is sort of a difference in the back. And then the other thing is this lift gate is power on the 200 series. Within the next two weeks, I'll be posting a video covering a more in-depth look into the week-long trip that I had with this car. And in that video, I'll include much more information regarding this car's off-road capability. However, I will touch on it briefly now. I was in the desert, so space wasn't an issue but I could see the slightly larger dimensions potentially being an issue on trails that involve trees and are a little more close quarters. That is, however, the only downside to this latest generation. No, it doesn't have lockers and that's unfortunate, but it's just as capable off-road as my 100 series. If not, maybe a little bit more. The KDSS works wonders on and off-road, the crawl control is a nice feature as well, and let's not forget the bigger engine can be helpful when you really need it. Be sure to subscribe and tune in next time for that more in-depth video. The last thing I'll touch on is aesthetics, and of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so you can be your own judge of this one. But if you want my take, I think it's a little too pedestrian looking. I think it looks a little bit too much like every other Toyota SUV. I thought the 100 series had this lovely quirkiness to it, especially the rear end that just doesn't look like anything else on the road. So this styling is a little bit of a letdown to me, but it's not exactly an unattractive car, just sort of a bland car. I mentioned earlier this model only had one option, which is the rear seat entertainment system. However, there is a special edition that you can now buy, and that's the Heritage Edition. Shockingly, however, the Heritage Edition is only cosmetic, and doesn't get you any hardware modifications making it more capable off-road. To me, that's confusing given the name and the fact that the Heritage Edition definitely looks the part. It's time to give a verdict on the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser. And the big question, of course, is, is this car still worthy of the Land Cruiser badge? And the short answer, in my opinion, is I think yes. I think this car is a definite evolution of the 100 series Land Cruiser. This isn't exactly a revolution. Nothing is super new here. They've just sort of improved everything in a little bit, really in every 
facet, in my opinion. I think it's just as capable off-road. Uh, they've come up with some interesting things, such as that KDSS suspension, which is the kinetic dynamic suspension system, which will let you articulate the wheels more off-road and then stiffen them up on-road so it handles better on-road. And it does handle better on-road than the 100 series. This is the best on-road vehicle land that Toyota has made as in the terms of Land Cruiser. It just keeps getting better and better, which is important because it's not just about making the most off-road capable vehicle. It has to be able to do both. So you also have a much better engine or a, at least a much more powerful engine. Reliability, I'm not sure. I think the 4.7 in the previous generation is one of the most reliable engines ever made, but this has way more horsepower and the uh, transmission has eight gears so it will return you a little bit better fuel economy and then of course you have the niceties inside such as the cooled seats the radar cruise control you have you know I mentioned all those electronic versions for crawl control that all the cameras which really help on and off-road when you're in parking lots or off-road they just they just keep making this better I think the only shortcomings there are two First of all is the price. This is now an $85,000 vehicle, which is a lot. And if you want something that goes on and off road, uh, you have a lot of balls to take an $85,000 car off road in my opinion. But if you wanna do it, you can do it. And I think you can feel confident doing it in this vehicle. The other downside is the whole heritage edition thing. For someone to say Heritage Edition with the Land Cruiser, my mind immediately goes to something that's gonna be a little more off-road capable. So the problem is the Heritage Edition is just a cosmetic, a bunch of cosmetic mods. You know, you, it looks tougher, it's got cool looking wheels, uh, you know, a roof rack and all this stuff, but it doesn't have lockers, it doesn't have a lift, it doesn't have a winch. Like, if you're gonna make a Heritage Edition Land Cruiser, give it some of that off-road capability stuff that these cars are known for. So that's really my biggest problem. But, but the fact that this base model is mechanically identical to the Heritage Edition, just you can choose whichever one you like the look of more because this one is a super stealth off-roader and the other one kind of looks more the part, but it depends what you're going for, of course. So yes, this is a worthy successor let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Am I off base here? If you want to follow me in between episodes, check me out on Instagram at EatSleepDriveTV. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. I'll see you on the next one.